It's the week of 6 to 10 March, and this is the weekly replay analysis. Let me see the data on this one. We're watching Merlin's Ghost. It's the Malfurion, it's Haunted Mines. Uh, and he did not say what league he's from. But did I ask? Let me check. Reply. Oh, I didn't ask for it. I guess. Ask and you shall receive. Possibly. So, we don't know. But it's J house level. So that uh, that tells us a little bit more. Actually, I don't know what level he is. And it doesn't matter. Uh, the purpose here is to see the potential of the draft of Malfurion. And uh, the map, his talent build, his positioning, and his decisions. Now we have a blueprint of uh, perfect play that we can try to draw from pro play. But we keep in mind that this is solo queue with a single player. And as such, you must make decisions based on what's best for Hero League, which is the Wild West. And so it's not really related to if you and your five members are on communications together, this is what you can achieve. So just imagine you are the Malfurion and we're going to follow the Malfurion specifically without even looking at other things. Nor are we going to zoom out this time. I really want to capture the Malfurion experience with locked camera at normal speed so we're not going to slow down or pause if we can help it because there isn't that much time to think in the game as well first of all nice and tangle follow up on the swap okay you're using your innervate cooldown uh, one thing we're going to look at is to see when and where you use your innervate and also your heals um, you have heal off of cooldown for a while you're taking a lot of damage from bala nearly died you were more busy with casting moonfire than innervate i would say that uh, oh sorry than heal i would say that heal is the most important like you have heal off of cooldown again and there's a lot of people to heal so i would tr really try to forget about moonfire for a bit you did take moonburn but it's mostly damaging against minions let me just pause for a second and reduce the volume i usually notice that is a bit better for replay analysis. Uh, just taking a look at, uh, let's see, can I see your character sheet? I can't, but we can see how much damage your auto attacks do. Your if you actually auto, atta auto attack. Okay, that, I'm, I am gonna pause now for a bit. Uh, yeah, this is Hero League. Oh, wait, it's Team Q? Oh, they queue up as four, you saw that? Oh, thank you, Decepti. So it is four Q. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to let it work for the greatest amount of people and say that this is actually doesn't matter if it's 4Q or solo queue. I don't know what level this is at, but what I want to say, your Moonfire does 114 damage, and I think your auto attack maybe does around 80 at this level. Except we don't know because you don't actually auto attack. And this is something that uh, a lot of non-assassins think is the way to do it. It happens actually a lot at uh, lower level play. Uh, people don't weave in auto attacks. And this is why even when I play a hero like Johanna, if I played that at Platinum, I would probably be top damage on the team. Um, just talking about the split. Uh, is it okay for Zeratul to be solo? Should it be Artana? Should it be Greymane? Actually, from those three, all can be the solo lane. Artanas has the shield, which gives him some self-sustain against poke. Uh, Greyman has good ranged clear, which makes him be able to take little poke. Whereas Zeratul has neither self-sustain nor ranged poke, but he does have near invisibility. Which means depending against what lane he's at, he will also do fine as a solo lane. Furthermore, Zeratul's are such a high-risk character, uh, such a high-risk hero... That to have them in the four-man rotation oftentimes makes things worse for you. So I will say, in theory, at pro play, it's best to put the Zeratul in the solo lane. Just so he kind of holds his horses and doesn't get too overly aggressive. 
wait to level 10 and start setting up those wonderful void prisons. Or wait till the game deteriorates into a state of anarchy where Zero Two can pick off strays. Generally, at the beginning of the game, people are a little bit more alert. Uh, so it is a fine solo lane, but so could have been Artanis or Grey. And I would say generally in Hero League, kind of just go with whoever is willing to do it and is fairly capable of doing it, rather than trying to get all angry if it doesn't go like how you plan to. But my first tip to you is save your mana on Moonburn, auto attack instead. You, you literally walk back and forth and cast... Uh, regrowth and Moonfire, which again, it's it's a very common problem. It's you know it's it's normal, but uh, everyone needs to weave in auto attacks. Here, you you dismount, you you walk here mounted, and you decide to help on the camp. But you don't actually auto attack. So let's first talk about hotkeys. I have quick cast setting on. You can also have it off. In order to understand how the game works, you should first play with off. What that means is that you will do. You will press the hotkey A, and you will then left click at the target area, which means you attack on that area if there is a unit or a hero there, or if there's nothing there, you will move to that point, attacking anything that comes in range, starting with the closest thing to you first. That is called attack move. As soon as all enemy units and buildings are dead, or you are, you will get to the point and you will stop there and you will wait for new orders or you will auto attack anything that comes in range. That's how auto attack works. Right mouse button somewhere is walk to target point until you get blocked, killed, but you will not engage anyone in combat. So you can also right click on a unit or a building or a hero. Then you will attack them. So the major difference is if you misclick, right click will get you killed walking as a ranged hero into the back line but attack click even though you misclick the Asmodan you will still attack the Varian that's in front of you so in terms of positioning mistakes misclicks are punished if you misclick a right click and attack clicks are not really punished except you attack the wrong target but at least you're not out of position so in order to stutter step correctly and I'll explain what stutter step is in a second you need to attack click to a direction or on a target and then use the period till your next attack move to take a small step in the direction you want to where do you want to want to move to in between that doesn't really matter for the sake of explaining stutter step if you are chasing you will take a mini step towards them auto attack mini step towards them auto attack that's how you chase if you are running away, but you want to dissuade an opponent from chasing you, you will right click away, auto attack them, right click away, auto attack them, right click away, auto attack them. Now how far can you move in between auto attacks is dependent on how fast you attack. If you attack once every 10 seconds, you have 9.5 seconds to move, you attack, you have 9.5 seconds to move, you attack. If you attack every 2 seconds, so 1 attack in 2 seconds, You've got one and a half second to move, you'll do an auto attack. One and a half second to move, you do an auto attack. So knowing that, there is a lot of periods where you can do an auto attack. And ideally, something that has a long cooldown, you want to do it first, wait for it to come back, and then do other things during that time, either moving or alternate abilities. So if you come here and there's a fight, you would first give a heal to Artanis, auto attack Charlie Murphy, Moonfire Charlie Murphy, and then auto attack him again. Take a step, and then auto attack him again. So what happened here is that you uh, you dismounted, but you just moonfired the sappers once, and that's it. And then you moved on, whereas you might as well have just auto attacked. And uh, and it seems to be a thing for you. You open with entangle. You go back. You give a heal. You moonfire, but not a single auto attack. In fact, I'm have okay. 75 that's your first auto attack in the game and uh the 75 damage is in contrast with your moonfire 118 if you only ever moonfire every three seconds during those three seconds you miss 225 damage so you do 360 but you miss 225 so you're missing nearly 40 percent of the potential damage you could put out on a target without any drawback but that's my first tip 
and we're going to leave that part now. For the rest, it's about pinging. Anytime you're in a fight that you consider is potentially devastating, work with pings. In fact, I think you're probably best off either not chatting or turning off chat with allies entirely. There's too many ragey kids actually on the ladder that uh, will say things that will distract you or distract themselves. And I found that as frustrating as it can be to have someone that never answers you and you would be that person, just having chat off is probably better. And so, um, let's say you don't talk about chat, but pings. Now, pings can be useful. For example, you five for backline diving their fort. It's risky. You got away with it, but it can be risky. So, maybe you want to just do one retreat ping. Not the six retreat pings, like I'm a smart ass and I'm sure about this. Just maybe we should go back, do a retreat ping. Uh, for the rest. Uh, it is time for you to Hearthstone. A healer without mana really can't do much, even if you feel like you're leaving your team. Also, you've got Innervate cooldown, so try to keep in mind of that. It's like clockwork. Every 30 seconds, give mana, give mana. Keep in mind, it doesn't just give mana. It also reduces cooldown. So you might, upon occasion, deliberately hold your Innervate cooldown if you believe that during the fight, it would be more advantageous. That's kind of advanced Malfurion. Maybe you think that in 20 seconds you need to use it. Even though there's someone with 60% mana, you actually want to use it during the fight so that the Artanis gets more twin blade swaps. It could even be that Artanis has full mana, but you still want them to have cooldown reduction. You see? It's cooldown reduction. It's pretty cool. 5 seconds, 50% faster cooldown recharge. Doesn't mean twice as fast, huh? One and a half times as fast. Uh, so you healed the wrong one. It can be difficult to aim it correctly. I think you hit Artanis. Yeah. But they overlap their, their, their profile. Feel free to kind of like wait a bit till they split off and get a more impactful heal. Now you're doing a lot of auto attacks and that's good. You're also kiting and static stepping. So you do know the concept. Uh, against the boss where you are not stressed. You're actually static stepping and kiting with your auto attacks pretty well. You attacked, you moved, you attacked, you moved. It shows you know how it works it's just that during team fights you kind of get stressed and you feel overburdened and you stop doing it also um yeah you get overburdened so again here you're doing a lot of moving but very little auto attacking do try to attack it even even if you don't attack every two or one second do try to attack every two two and a half three seconds like now you're doing it right again okay All right you mounted uh, and left. That's actually not a bad idea. You see, as a healer, you always need to make... Grey Man should stay, yeah. As a healer, you always need to make sure that you are with the players that are most likely to die. And, and you know, there's something to be said for being the healer that split wave clears. But not only do you lower losses when you go with your teammates, he wants to heal. Not only do you lower losses when you go with the team that's most likely to die, you also potentially increase the gains you get there. And although you, split soaking is great, it should probably not be the role of a support. I like your positioning, you're positioning very safely, not going forward for some greedy and meaningless pokes. You're not in vision. You're, you're not out of vision right now. It looks like it, but you're not. Keep in mind that you need that little eye on top of you that shows that you are indeed invisible in that bush. Okay, let's take a look at your build. You've got cleanse, so we're gonna see about cleanse. Now, one thing about cleanse, if you're not perfect with it yet, and few people are, and you can kind of make routine most of your other ability usage, keep a very conscious effort well to remember that you have here. cleanse and what you might want to use it for. So for example, in this game, what would we potentially want to cleanse? Well, Warbringer is now a slow, not a stun, but it's still a pretty hefty slow. Then Vala might get Reign of Vengeance. Lucio doesn't really have all that much. There's the boss stuns and roots to think about. And Joanna has Blessed Shield. So I would say that probably if Malf had any other level 7 talents that were actually any good, I would say this would be okay to skip cleanse. Maybe, just maybe on this map, you would have preferred to instead get Mule. 
Because I think you're going to have a really hard time to make effective use of cleanse. Now, if your goal is to practice it and get better at it in general, and to use it even on semi-significant slows, then power to you. Use that cleanse. But I would say this is a situation where I skip it. Mule, though, on Haunted Mines can be very, very strong, so do pay attention to that. Now, let, let's talk about your positioning. Your team has decided that they want to flank, and ETC and Greymane definitely are the flanking heroes. Uh, in fact, you could say that your entire army positioning is coming from top and it's Zeratul who's the flanker. So your positioning here is okay, so long as you do not think of yourself as going to your gate. That is a path that you can't safely take. So as long as you stay in this area, you are fine to follow your team. You could rotate around safely and go to the gate side, but probably you will be late for certain things. So I'm okay with this, just keep your distance. And you are indeed keeping your distance, so that's good. Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind is regrowth heals you over 15 seconds. One fourth of the healing of regrowth is instant, and the other three fourths is over time. So, you can actually regrowth ETC before he takes his very first damage, so that you can start putting regrowth on cooldown. And that means that instead of in five seconds, you'll have your next heal in two to three seconds. So as soon as you see your ATC engaging here, just give him a heal, and he'll be going up, and you would have your second heal now. Very nice entangle. Good follow up on Artanis. Johanna was a little bit late with, his, uh, with her uh, unstoppable, but that was very good. So now what I would do, I would say, ping, help here. Someone needs to go top. It's not you, you're the support, but if you want to do the best you can, you say assist ping, assist ping. Uh, to get XP. Of course, you could also decide to omit it and push the fort. But this here, oh, typical Hero Liga. Five people dancing around and looking at something, not doing anything. You're literally a level up and they have a hero down and you're in front of a fort with a minion wave. At the very least, you should do 50% damage on this fort, if not more. Taking a quick sneak peek at the other side, they're actually doing a camp and defending only with two. Free kill on the fort. Very little for you guys to be doing here, and you just literally look at the fort and then just leave. That's what we call a waste of time. However, our time has found Varian. And so you guys will kill a hero, steal the camp, and that's still pretty great. But now already, start thinking about what are we going to do next? How do we use our 5 versus 4 to get some real value? You can kill heroes all day, every day. But keep in mind, the goal is structural damage, which leads to the destruction of the core. So any split that is like three in a lane, two in a lane, we only kill the wave and then we leave, it's going to feel somewhat lackluster. The five of you could have pushed again into this fort and kill these two towers at the very least. And the first one on your team that has that idea, that makes that call and says kill this tower is generally going to get listened to. Just because people are very open for ideas and very not open to stop following ideas. For example, take any boss call ever. That feels better. You know, I Thank think that maybe should we take this boss? <laughs> Everyone goes. No, 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 no. I said maybe. I don't think we should. Everyone dies. Always happens. So this split that you guys are doing now makes you weak. You're actually a talent up. You're a heroic up. But you guys decided to do a 2-3 split for some simple lane XP. Greymane main uh, enters from here, Malf enters from here, ETC is here, and this is the best way to throw away a talent lead. Even if you guys don't get a fort, I would still want the five of you to stick together. I think our talents will live. <laughs> Cheats, lasers should follow. Uh, but yeah, missed some opportunity here. Now, given the fact that they just left and you're still level 10, I would guarantee you that they will stay uphill and take camps and lanes until they're level 10. So I would want all of you to split now. One here, one here, one here, one here. As soon as you find someone, run like the wind. But if the five of you are going to go to a single skull camp, unless you're going to like get an effective engage and kill, then it's going to be a big waste of time. Now let's talk about mounting. Mounting takes about, what, two seconds? And it increases your movement speed by 30%. I don't remember the exact math anymore because it changed, but try to use as a rule. If you're going to move for more than four seconds, 
mount up and get there. If you're going to move for three or less seconds, walk there. So for example, if you're here, you're going to walk here to heal someone here, walk. But if you're here and you're going to go through the gate, mount. So I've seen you go all the way from here and you're walking. Gray man too. Generally, not a good idea. However, because you are a healer, there are exceptions. Because maybe you want to continue to use regrowths during that time. And you are. So I guess that makes it kind of okay. But now you can see that most people are getting away from you. And you just did your final heal. So this is the time to mount. You favor me. And you miss it only by half a second. So that's pretty efficient. That was good. good move by you, actually. You're going to heal Zeratul. You wait till the cooldown is up and you will mount again. So good efficiency. Uh, are you looking at the minimap? You see them here, they entered. That means they're coming from here. And you should do a danger ping here at the crossroads. If Grimming goes up, he'll be caught by himself. I see you rotating down to get to the bottom of the boss, which is really uh, heads up positioning. You're not putting yourself to the most dangerous side, so great job by you. You're now starting to Hearthstone, which I would say you should either do it all together or not at all. Uh, it's okay if the, all of you are sticking together because what's happening here is that some people are going to get engaged on. And uh, poor Jayhao, who decided to finish the boss, needed that support. The four of you should should have done a tactical retreat together. Uh, you really want to be careful of those kind of uh, heartstones by themselves. I am renewed. Uh, so now talk about positioning. You're staying outside of the vision initially, which is really good. Uh, you should do an immediate entangle here and run away because for all you know all five of them are together here so you did the entangle a little bit off but I think you were a bit hurried so that's all good it's all fine it's a good move get the vision and you go back no I don't believe this is diamond or masters uh, slate 3g but uh, there's always a lot of good and a lot of improvement points to find at any level, I find. Okay, this is where you really want to use your Moonburn. You're also weaving in auto attacks, so that's great. Uh, there is still one skull available. So first, you can also ask yourself, uh, always challenge your own beliefs. Is it good for us to have that one skull persisting or is it bad for us? In order to answer that question, we kind of need to understand our draft. Do we have a late game comp or an early game comp? Well, ETC and Malf are great early game. I would say that ETC becomes more and more vulnerable as the game goes on. Um, compared to the scaling of the enemy damage dealers. Greymane... I would say Greymane is fairly consistent over the course of a game. Artanis is a bit more of a late game hero. Zeratul, mid to late game I would say. Vala, I would say, is a late game hero. At level 20, she gets Far Flight Quaver. Mm, Lucio, Power Spike is 16. Osmo, Power Spike, I would say, is. It is level 10 in a sense, but it's also a pretty good late game with his push, except his push element isn't that good on this map. Varian is level 10 plus, with a spike at 13 and 16. 20. It's actually a pretty big spike as well if you have a good healer. Yeah, Varian's really good at level 20. Johanna is very much an early to mid game hero who is not particularly better late game. She becomes more and more ignorable, in fact. So I would say it's okay for you to go late game. Um, then talking about the structural position, the heroic position and the levels. Well, you would ideally like to clear this first before having to contend with uh, activating your boss. So you de-push this, and then you would take it. So it would be pretty okay to send Zeratul now. I think you would want to go and grab it. Not that you're really going to make such complicated decisions in the game, generally, at this level. But it's still a very interesting uh, point. You're doing auto attacks really good. And that helped confirm the kill as well. So you've gotten better at it. Uh, you look at the map, and there could be three people coming for you, so definitely want to head back. Why do I say three? I saw Osmo here, and one is dead. So you don't know where the other three are. Uh, cleanse uh, would be decent to use on Artanus here, or at least to think about it. Nice entangle attempts as well. 
Uh, I don't think you've used Clan Swat once yet, nor did you need it. Mule would have been really nice. Thank you, healer. Gonna speed it up a bit. You're thinking of your level 13. I would say ice block every time. All right. Nice and tangle. Your tangles are really spot on. You're nearly always waiting for your allies to set it up. It's very important. Thank you, Ninja Raiden. Uh, Twilight Dream would kill him if you wanted to kill him. Yeah, I think you should have just used it because it would represent the killing of the fort, the stopping of the chase, and so on and so on. It looks like you guys are going to get him anyway, but... Yeah, it would have prevented you from having to dive behind the fort. Thank you, man about town. Uh, not killing this fort, given your positioning, is fairly okay and forgivable. But it's really a wasted opportunity. Killing a fort is better than killing two heroes, honestly. Because it leads you to eventually kill a keep. Look at this. You've got 9 versus 3 takedowns, 1 level lead. You have yet to kill either of the forts that you absolutely had a right to kill. I would say probably the major use for Glenn's this game is indeed stopping Moshpit to get interrupted uh, for about a second, but you need to be really heads up with it, really on point. Nice auto attack weaves in again. Let me speed it up a bit. Someone finally took the skull. And you always chase ETC, that's exactly how you want to do it. ETC, mouth, power slide, and tango combo is great. Very nice. Very on point. Got your Twilight Dream off. At this point, you really want to innervate ETC immediately so he gets his next power slide back faster. And that kind of jazz. Nice. Um, uh, hmm. Yeah, you guys got the kills, but you must get the keep now, because they already did. Poor Zera has to wave clear all game long. <laughs> oh my god, the god swaps by Jao. The mosh pits. <laughs> nice. So, given the HP of the boss, and the situation of the... Oh my god! You end, you end the game, certainly now. If you get one more kill, you should go for the core. I think you should have positioned a lot more aggressively. Even just to get more auto attacks in. Because uh, these two people got away. And if you got a few more auto attacks, Moonfire, and to eventually untangle them before they get to the core, that would have been just lovely. I think you guys are going to be ending. One more kill really would have helped seal the deal. Get your cleanse ready. Cleanse. Uh, this is the times where you just spam out a cleanse on someone that gets a slow or anything. Like cleansing Grey Mane so he doesn't get charged. it will be great. Jeho understood the core is the correct choice, but you guys all took too much splash damage. Uh, since someone said that you guys are a four-man team, I would really, uh, I would really say to educate yourselves on correct core ending mechanics. There are many core calls that end up failing, not because they were the wrong call, but because people just take splash damage. The range of splash is about yay big, so if you stand next to someone in the center and you stand in the green square, you will take the, the full damage, just like the first person. So if you're gonna attack it and rotate around it, don't stand next to each other. Uh, the, the bottom keep did eventually die. Speed up a bit. Uh, positionally, I feel like you should be further back. Varian is here. They're about to reach 16. And if he comes in with the charge and they decide to somehow focus fire for once and they go for you, you could be in a bit of trouble. You Greetings, do have an ice block, friend. but it, with Artana still being away. Of your stream, I blame your questionable punctuality. It's okay, I was five minutes late, but you're even later. I forgive you. I think you should be here. A bit safer. After all, you don't need three people to cap the camp. See, uh, Varian has an angle on you now, and suddenly you find yourself most forward. You couldn't have predicted that Asma would be so late, that Varian doesn't go for me, or that the team doesn't pounce on you. But you never want to find yourself in front as a support, so you need to think three steps ahead. Everything went fine, but it doesn't mean we can't learn from it. 
decent entangled. Zones out the rest anyway. This is really where you want to mount up. There's no reason to walk after the enemy team all quite slow. Generally, you attribute one or two people to mount, uh, sorry, to walk like this and to continue to dismount people if you do want to chase. And the rest mounts up to gain speed, race past them and set trap in front of them. Four people not mounting leads to not having any bonus speed, in fact. There's no way that someone can get away from two to three people, as long as one ma not mount and one yes mount. Great English. Great job, Grubby. A bit far by himself. We don't really need to engage here. Uh, I would say just ping back and get 100 skulls. You guys, you guys have like map control over them. You've pushed them back. You've got to keep up. You're two levels up, but you're not a talent up. And that's important. Your push is similar. They push the top, you push the bottom. Actually, you also lost the keep. But anyway, you've got the level lead, right? And so there's no real reason to force a fight here. If you win it, you still get all the skulls. You also get all the skulls now. But if you lose it, they get the skulls. So you really have more to lose. Furthermore, if you go one for one, they will get much more XP than you. So the only reason this is worth it, if you expect to kill two or more people without losing anyone. And even then, if they backdoor the top part of the mines, they can still get 30 skulls that they do not have a right to. So I would say the chances of you furthering your game state by doing this, except if you're going to go kill the tower, like two towers, is about 10% chance. Aye aye, sir. So this looks like a super try-hard attempt at like asserting dominance, which ends up not leading to anything. I mean, he's gonna have to use Void Prison, it's such a waste, the team is split. He doesn't even go in, I don't know why. Okay. And also, please, you saw the entire team is chasing Zeratul. Don't four-man a shit camp. Split up in four. No, stop it! Okay. Yeah, that's, as long as you know the position of the enemy, and you do, split. So you guys could have had the entire smallest, you would have 70 skulls, and you would all be allowed to hearthstone and defend. Uh, but, of course, despite what I said, you can almost never go wrong over grouping. Death balling, as some might call it. So I'm not going to say it was definitely wrong. You also have to play to the level you play at. And always grouping reduces the chances of getting picked off by yourself. So I really don't fault you here, uh, Mal. Oh. All right. Start thinking about doing a back ping. Everyone is at 40% lives. So you can still lose the fight. Nice. Months, okay. Always a pleasure to watch. Thanks for the content. Grubby less than three. Thank you very much, Daners. Now start thinking about cleanse. ETC might mosh pit anytime soon. We'd like to interrupt the initial part. Start thinking about it. Wait till his next power slide. It should be soon. He's gonna power slide. He's going to power slide. And. Jeez, that's a big push. Need some more defense. Uh, I already told him that, Death Knight. Okay, Zeratul did a great job split soaking and defending the push. They could have hurt. Um, you again put yourself to the most likely position to be safe, to the left of the boss, and you stutter step kite. You are the best stutter step kiter on your team, actually. So great job. Everyone hard stoning is good. Ideally, you do it at identical same time, but you're never going to orchestrate that in Hero League. Just so that if someone gets interrupted, everyone's still together. 
I had a game just yesterday where the three people got it and the Hearthstone staggered, not in, uh, at the same time, and we killed two of them. Okay, great deep push. Mm. I would say that you guys need to grab this vision first before doing this, because the most optimal playing strategy for the opponent is to go past here to your core. From the top, it's also possible, but it's delayed. But from here is the fastest, and they own the vision. They saw all of you here. So I'm just going to reveal the map, and I'm going to assume that they're somewhere here planning Reading to go for your core. You, nice replay analysis. Well, I guess everyone doesn't always play the optimal strategy, do they? But it doesn't mean that you're right, leaving your flank <laughs> exposed. <laughs> they decide to go for the 2-2-1 two, two, defense strat. No, no, no. The 2 one, one, one defense strat. Two people go core. The main damage stealers, Varian and Johanna. <laughs> Two people defend, and uh, Osmo does the split push. Blue team's core is under attack. But, and, and they take splash damage. On well, that. Okay, this is far enough, you see? Anyway, at this moment, you could safely hardstone, because at this moment, the golem will kill the core. Or you can just go for the core. Either way. Oh my, more spit, there we go, <laughs> nice, yeah, uh, you still have Twilight Dream, make sure not to hold on to it in such situations, uh, you just lost Zeratul here while you still have Twilight Dream, so uh, you've really held on to your abilities long, uh, the whole game, I don't think you had to ice block even once, but that's because you never got threatened, so that's great. But there's one moment where you do not pussyfoot around. Where you just press all the buttons. Bolt. Brrr, Twilight Dream. I think I just restarted the replay by accident. Okay, anyway. You do not lose Zeratul while going all in. Imagine if that actually cost you the core. So in this moment, now we look at you. First of all, Zeratul should back off a bit. Here, this is your moment. Bolt Twilight Dream. Go. Cleanse. Cleanse. Bolt Twilight. No! Your full life! It's not about your safety. So, I really think you played very well, uh, Merlin Ghost. It's just during this particular time, you needed to be far more balls to the wall. Also, Greyman is taking splash damage from the core. God! There needs to be some tutorial that says the core does splash damage. So, the core will always attack PvE first, including, uh, first of all, bosses, and mercs, and then minions, and then summons, and also murky egg. Banners, mules, scouting drone, whatever. Maybe not scouting drone, but pretty much everything before it attacks heroes. So if you put a goblin turret with Gaslow and you stand on top of it, you're going to take full damage, needlessly. So you really want to make sure never to stand under the PvE that gets focused. And Greyman didn't get it, Zerva didn't get it. But you could have helped them anyway by doing Twilight Dream. Anyway, great game. Nice teamwork. Kind of close game. Very... Not okay that it was close, by the way, because uh, you should have taken your own vision and defend against the Coral in, which was a very half-assed attempt. If they sent all five and you guys slow push the way you did, they would have actually won, which is pretty scary to think about that you could lose after dominating the whole game. So strategically, it was a little weak. A few calls were made and too little structural damage when you were ahead. Yeah, I can't vote. But overall, you played safe. You have the mind of a support or backline range damage dealer. Very good entangling roots. Weave in more auto attacks though. Uh, try to do pre regrowths on people. Keep in mind to use your innovate cooldown all the time unless you have a plan for it. And most of all, ping your teammates or if you were on voice, make sure to capitalize on uh, game state advantages. Thanks for submitting the replay, Merlin Ghost. Hope you liked it. Since when does Core do splash damage? Since 1996. Time to man up. Much obliged. Best 
This medic's my new best friend. 